Hello YouTube, welcome to another one of Eric's projects. Hey, I just want to start out by saying thank you to everyone who's clicked subscribe on this channel and I really do appreciate it. I like making these videos for myself as knowledge as well as helping everyone, every one of you out there. Hey, today we're working on the 2016 Razor 570 again, the ultimate trail machine. Now this machine has been set up just over the course of a few years now. I've done the Super ATV forward A-arms on it. I've got the 4-inch GDP portals on it. Um, I put some Super ATV uh, heavy-duty front springs on it to get because the stock front springs were just fading out really bad. And I'm running the 30 by 10 by 14 Sun F tires now, the Bighorn knockoffs, and running a set of a STI 14-inch uh, beadlocks. Uh, this backspacing is 4.3, which is not near as nice as what I had before with the the five-inch backspacing. I got some rubbing now, but that's what the taller springs take into account for. So today we're going to do some steering upgrades on this thing. Uh, if you've got a 570 or 800, this should probably apply to you also. This is the 50 inch model, not the S, but with the S, you can still do this same stuff. You just got to look for a little different part. Now, with the portals on there, I, uh, when I did the forward A arms, it came with the extended tie rod ends and the weight of the portals and it just, it ate those tie rod ends up. They just, they didn't last at all. I bought some American Star tie rod ends off of eBay, I think for about $43, and they're the Heim joint ones, and they have the little misalignment spacers and still run the same 10 millimeter bolt. And just doing some looking, I just really wanted some upgrade parts, especially the tie rod itself, because the tie rod itself is pretty small. It's right around a half inch in diameter, and I just really wanted something bigger, running bigger tires, the heavy portals, going out and playing on the rocks and the trails, and didn't want to end up bending a tie rod out on the trail. So after doing a bunch of research, I found some parts that look like and they fit really good. Uh, a little bit of modification to them. I'll include the links in the description of the video of what those parts are and where you can find them for yourself. So let's go ahead and I'll pull the tire off of this so we can get better access to the tie rod and we'll start looking at upgrading your, your steering system on the Razor 570. Okay, yeah, we'll go ahead and pull the tire off this thing just to get some easier access into those tie rods and tie rod ends. And we'll show you how to upgrade this thing and show you some differences between the 1000 and the 570. Okay, looking in here, here's those American Star Heim joints I put on. Uh, just to, because them factory tie rod ends were worn out and junk. And as you know, here's your factory tie rod and you know, pretty small diameter. Uh, just threaded on the one end for the tie rod end and the other end has got a ball and socket that goes into the rack so this boots pretty easy to get off just slip your clamp off and on the back here looks like a zip tie from the factory so we'll just snip that off and get this boot pulled off okay zip ties off boot just goes ahead and twist and pull there's your factory little ball and socket screwed right into your rack now uh, go ahead and get this out of here and we'll do some comparing Okay with the boot pulled back to get this off There's a flat spot here and on the bottom side for this little socket so you can get a wrench on there um, Pretty difficult with the axle in the way and the control arms in the way So what I did on the other side and I'll just do the same thing here I'm gonna go ahead and pull my front face off and slip that lower control arm bolt all the way out and drop that lower control arm down and that'll free me up and give me plenty of space to go ahead and get that uh, inner part of that tie rod off. Okay, lower control arms off, just that bolt slipping out of there. Got the uh, inner tie rod unthreaded from the rack. And let's see, I'll show you a couple things here with that rack. So a friend of mine loaned me his old rack out of his 2014 thousand XP I just wanted to check some measurements, dimensions, and things, and you know what? Actually, this rack will uh, will go in place, it looks like, for where the 570 rack is. So that might be just a swap for you guys in general. But I'll show you a couple things I found compared to the 570 and the 1000. Uh, just something to consider. Okay, the shaft of the factory rack on a 570 is okay the shaft on the factory rack is like right at 900 thousandths as far as shaft diameter and i'll show you what it is on the thousand 
So let's look at what the uh, what the gear is on that. And it's actually 864, so it is slightly smaller diameter than the 570. Or, let's see, if I get it in there. So, 870, and eh, very well, it could, could be off just a little bit. But, so you're at the same diameter or a little bigger on the 570 than you are on the 1000. Now the other thing is, because I was first looking at this 1000 to see if I could make its parts work. Now this is the inner tie rod end from the 1000. It's uh, pretty short, only this long, because the tie rods themselves well, they look like this. Just a tube with the tie rod end and the same 10 millimeter bolt as us 570s have. So it seems to be the only difference between the 1000 rack and the 570 rack is this piece right here. A little heavier duty. So an option is if you wanted to, you could take this 1000 piece and cut it and cut out the distance that you needed to match up to your 570 and then weld the sleeve back around it and... There you go, screw it right into screw it right into yours with the factory inner tie rod end and the factory tie rod off a thousand right onto your rack. Now the uh, now the thread pattern for this is an M14 by one and a half, 1.5. I started doing some research, measuring out my tie rod end, and I got on Moog's website. And I believe the part is an EV303. I'll put the link to the description. I'll put the link in the description of what the uh, tie rods are for this. But anyway, so an EV303 comes off a Toyota RAV4 as well as several other vehicles. But it's a very common part. It's a very cheap part. I actually got on Amazon. Let's see if I can get a good picture of this here. Or not Amazon. Rock Auto. This is the EV303, and I got these for $6 each plus shipping, so I was in it $15 shipped to my door. I, for the outer tie rod ends, they're also off the same year of RAV4, Toyota RAV4, and I could have got those for $15 for the pair of them shipped to my door also, but I got in a hurry and went down to CarQuest. They had them in stock, so I paid $17 each for them. So what these are, this is an M14 by one and a half, just like your factory rack end has. And the outer end here is an M14 by one and a half thread also. What I originally did, because I like the size of this, and I'll give you some measurements comparing the stock one and this one. What I originally did was I got on a website called Steinjager, and I'll put a link to their website in the description. And I ordered up some M14 by one and a half heim joints. Now, the trouble I was having was the bore is for a 14 millimeter bolt also and I was having trouble finding a reducer from a 14 down to a 12 or a 10. And looking at the portal bracket right here, this is where your, let's see, this is where your 10 millimeter bolt goes into. It just doesn't look like there's a whole lot of meat here on the outside just to keep drilling it out and drilling it out. But then I got to looking and this hole here is actually tapered. And I called Super ATV and asked them if it was tapered. And they said, yes, it is tapered. And they were going to get back with me of what fits in that taper, but never did. I suppose they probably want to sell a part or something. So I just kept doing some looking and I guessed. And I thought, you know, I got that inner tie rod for a RAV4. I wonder if the outer tie rod for the RAV4 fits. So I'll show you. So here's the RAV4 inner tie, outer tie rod end. And right in the hole. A little snug, push it down, no play, and there we have it. So to me, it looks like that is going to work. And I'll show you the other side. Here it is on the other side, installed with the factory boot. And I only had to do one thing to make it work. 
because as I just said, that inner tie rod fits in the taper or the outer tie rod. The inner tie rod fits into the thread on the rack. And well, let's go inside here and get a little better light. The only thing I had to do was I took this tie rod and because of the length of the factory tie rod, the Toyota tie rod, compared to the Steinjager Heim joint, I had to take and cut three quarters of an inch off of the end of this. And I went, I left the nut on there, just took my angle grinder, measured it out, boom, cut it off, and then took the nut and then backed the nut off to clean up the threads. And that way my Toyota tie rod end goes on there and it's the perfect length and it's fully adjustable just like the stock one was because the stock one as you can see here has the ball and socket on one end and threaded on the other end ball and socket on one end threaded on the other end so it adjusts the same this is a right hand thread instead of a fact instead of like the razor left-handed thread so if you do want to get a heim joint it's a whole lot easier to get a right-handed thread one than it is a left-handed thread it seems like and for whatever reason metric heim joints are getting hard are hard to come by i don't know why being everything's metric but let's compare the sizes of these two between the Toyota one and the stock Razor one. I mean, as you can see just from the picture, the size of the ball and socket joint is just noticeably larger. Where it tapers down to go into the ball is much bigger compared to the factory Razor one. The factory razor shaft, 591 up at the fat point there. Six seventy on the Toyota. Main part of the shaft, six seventy. And the razor one, we're at five twenty. It's 150 thousandths bigger, and it just keeps these big dimensions, 520, 470, and then tapers down even more to a 465. It just keeps these big dimensions all the way down, way heavier duty. And for the price of replacing these is insane, and to buy the heavy duty upgrade kit, which essentially is the Razor 1000 tie rods cut down to fit your machine because it has the uh, the small inner tie rod end that goes into the rack, the long tube, and the outer tie rod, whether it's a Heim joint or just I've even seen it with just the factory Razor tie rod ends, which we know wear out and suck. So this is a way cheap upgrade, much bigger in every aspect. The ball and socket's bigger, the whole shaft is bigger, uh, it doesn't have this large machine down area there. Just the whole thing is much bigger. And these, like I said, so I got four, two inner tie rods, two outer tie rods, Rock Auto, 30 bucks. 30 bucks, that's it, to upgrade these. I mean, I paid more than that for these Heim joints. I paid more than that for those American Star Heim joints to go on the stock ones, and then I still have that stock tie rod. So I'll show you how they go in. And like I said, all I did was cut three quarters of an inch off the end of this. That way the factory Toyota tie rod end can go on. And bam, you're in business. You use your factory boot, the tie rod boot that came off of the razor. That will actually stretch to go over the shaft of this so it's nice and tight. You can put that clamp back on there if you want. Fits over this ball nice and snug and right back onto your factory rack so there's nothing special there. This is just bolt-on parts using factory parts from Toyota and Razor. Okay, there it is. We can see it there. That's the Toyota inner tie rod in there. This is the factory razor boot. Just slips right over. Boy, these shadows are killing me. Factory boot just slips right over. Over the ball. And up on to the rack. Just like it was meant to be. There we go. That is completely on. I can put the clamp back on here uh, or a zip tie, put a zip tie up on that end.
Gonna take my Toyota nut M14 by one and a half, put it back on the tie rod for my lock nut. Maybe. Take my Toyota RAV4 outer tie rod end. Now before I put this in the bracket for the steering knuckle, I'm gonna go ahead and put my lower control arm back on to make sure everything's all lined up. Okay, all back in place. Got the whole tie rod assembly in there. Inner tie rod, factory boot, got the clamp back on there. And out here to the outer tie rod, right into the portal bracket. Now, all you gotta do is set your alignment just like you would normally, due to the fact that it is just like the stock one of only threaded on one end. So, that is all there is to it. Toyota RAV4, inner and outer tie rod ends, cut three quarters of an inch off. You can, you can find one that has the correct length, but I wanted the largest diameter I could find. It's also very easy to find inner tie rod ends that are nice and short. You can build your own tube, get some bung adapters for an uh, M14, or um, and then out, if you're going to use Himes, go out on the end. I would highly suggest using SAE out on the end for Himes. Way easier to find Heim joints as well as misalignment spacers and reducer bushings, all of that kind of stuff. So super easy to do, uh, very cheap to do. Don't no reason to spend a couple hundred bucks on some heavy duty steering parts. Uh, if anyone finds a better tie rod end that fits in that taper better, but these fit great. There's no movement. They tighten up well. Uh, I'm happy. I'm going to see how these things run. But if anybody finds something different or better, please let me know in the comments. I'm always looking to upgrade this thing. Heck, one of these days I'm going to figure out how to upgrade that brake caliper bracket to run a small car brake caliper and get some better brakes out of this thing too. That'll be down the road sometime. But easy enough. There you go, 30 bucks heavy duty tie rods. Goes right into your factory tie rod ends or your factory rack. And this is that full droop. That tie rod end is still looking pretty good. Awesome. Hey, just a couple of the things on this uh, tie rod swap. If you're not running portals, it looks like on the factory steering knuckles, there's enough beef there to drill those out to, you know, 12 mil, 14 mil if you wanted to use them other uh, tie rod ends. Or if you do make your own, like I said, I would highly suggest using an SAE tie rod end, like a half 13 or, you know, 9 16 or something. Even a three quarter if you really wanted to. And you can uh, drill out your stock knuckle to at least a half inch with no problem. There's plenty of meat there on the sides. It's just uh, on the bottom side, it gets a little tapered up, but you see that when you look at it. But anyway, this swap has been great. I just took it for a ride. Went around down the street a little bit. Steering's nice and tight. And I, I like the fact knowing that I've just got simple, easy to find auto parts store parts. Nothing crazy, nothing expensive, and it works. And I love it. This is awesome because I'm all about finding heavy duty stuff on the cheap because if it says Razor on it, the price is way too high. So there's got to be other options out there. And this is one of them for you. So hope you enjoyed this and hope to see you out on the trail. God bless you.